human sensory organs eyes how do we see things around us how do we hear different types of sounds how do we tell apart a bad odor from a sweet fragrance how do we know whether the food is tasty or tasteless sweet or sour cold or hot how do we react accordingly to the touch of hot cold smooth or sharp objects all these things are possible because our sensory organs are made up of peculiar substances as well as functions in a very specific manner so as to help us perform the activities of day-to-day -day life one of the most important of all sensory organs are the eyes eyes are the sense organs for vision and contain receptors called photoreceptors rod cells and cone cells which convert the energy or specific wavelengths of light into action potentials of nerve fibers photoreceptors give a definite idea about the objects in the environment each eyeball is about 2.5 cm in diameter an eyeball is lodged within a bony socket called an orbit the extrinsic muscle of the eye helps in the movements of the orbit wall an eyeball consists of three coats the outer coat consists of the sclera and cornea the middle coat is called uvea and the inner coat is called retina the outer wall of the eyeball is formed by a thick white opaque membrane called the sclera it mainly consists of white fibrous tissue known as collagen sclera is 5/6 of the outer wall of the eyeball the region of the outer facing directly forward is a transparent cornea most of the cornea is made up of a connective tissue called lamina propria it is 1/6 of the outer wall of the eyeball and has no blood vessels or lymphatics and receives nutrition from vessels around its periphery cornea has a rich nerve supply light passes through cornea and provides vision the middle coat is also known as uvea because of its green color and is highly vascular in nature it has three parts the anterior most part is known as the iris the posterior most part is called the choroid and the part that lies between the iris and the choroid is said to be the ciliary body the iris appears the black screen through the cornea and is a small central aperture called the pupil it has two sets of smooth muscles which are arranged circularly and radically around the pupil the pupil regulates the amount of light passing into the eye in bright light it contracts and in dim light it dilates so that the optimum amount of light required for proper vision reaches the retina the choroid is highly vascular and pigmented and basically helps in the formation of sharp images on the retina the ciliary body is a ring like structure continuous with the periphery of the iris its posterior part is called the ciliary ring and it has an anterior part made up of radically arranged ciliary processes the inner layer of the posterior two-thirds of the eyeball consists of a light sensitive layer called the retina it consists of two types of photoreceptors rod and cone cells and four types of neurons including bipolar nerve cells and ganglion cells the retina has 6 million cones and 120 million rods cones are required for daylight vision and rods for night vision 
They contain light sensitive pigments. Rod cells contain a purplish pigment known as visual purple or rhodopsin which is formed from vitamin A. On the contrary, cones contain a violet color pigment said to be visual violet or iodopsin. The interpretation of the impulses in the visual center of the cerebrum results in vision. The human eye absorbs light from all wavelengths. The cones are of three types, red, green and blue. Each possesses a different pigment that absorbs light. Trichromatic theory of color vision states that different colors and shades are produced by the degree of stimulation of each type of cone. The absence or shortage of a particular cone can lead to various forms of color weakness. Rod cells function in dim light and at night, while cone cells function in daylight and produce detailed images and give color vision. Stimulation by light causes some photochemical reaction within rods and cones, as a result of which nerve impulses are developed and are transmitted to the optic nerve via several synapses. As light strikes rods or cones, photoreceptors are stimulated, which causes development of impulse, which is conveyed to bipolar cells, which in turn hand it over to ganglion cells. There are about one million ganglion cells in the retina. The axons of the ganglion cells are collected together into a bundle which exits from the eye as optic nerve. The optic nerve carries impulses to the brain. There is a spot at the beginning of the optic nerve which is devoid of the ability of vision called the blind spot. The macula lies a little lateral to the blind spot. Its central part called fovea centralis containing only cones and no rods is the point of highest vision ability. The space between the iris and cornea is called anterior chamber and the one between the iris and front of the lens is known as posterior chamber. These chambers are filled by a thin watery fluid called aqueous humor. The part of the eyeball behind the lens is filled by a -like substance known as vitreous body or vitreous humor. The aqueous humor supplies nutrients like glucose and removes waste products of metabolism like lactic acid from the lens and the cornea. Due to the constant pressure of aqueous humor, the eyeball remains rigid and its optical system works properly. The vitreous body helps in preventing the eyeball from collapsing and holds the retina flush against the internal portions of the eyeball. The vitreous body does not undergo constant replacement and is formed during embryonic life and is not replaced thereafter. A biconvex transparent lens is present in between the iris in front and the vitreous humor at the back. It is encased by a capsule which is suspended from the ciliary body by the suspensory ligament of the lens. Suspensory ligaments are attached with the ciliary body at the lateral ends. The lens is made up of ribbon-like transparent fibers arranged in concentric lamellae. When the ciliary muscles contract, the tension of the suspensory ligament on the lens eases up and as a result the anterior surface of the lens bulges. Accessory visual organs include extraocular muscles eyebrows, eyelids, conjunctiva and lacrimal glands. The conjunctiva is a thin transparent membrane that covers the inner surface of the eyelid and the anterior part of the sclera. The upper and lower eyelids shade the eyes during sleep, protects them from excessive lights and foreign objects and spread lubricating secretions over the eyeball. 
The eyelashes protect the eyeballs from foreign objects, perspiration, and the direct rays of the sun. Lacrimal glands are situated between the socket and the eyeball at its upper and lateral part. They produce a fluid called tears. Tears wash away many irritants that may fall on the eye. They contain lysozyme which can kill bacteria and act as a disinfectant. The working of an eye can be compared to that of a camera. Light reflected from an object enters the eye through the pupil. The iris controls the amount of light passing through by controlling the size of the pupil. The rays of light converge as they pass through the aqueous humor, lens and vitreous humor and finally focus at the retina forming an inverted image of the object. The muscle of the eyeball moves the image where the vision is sharp and the lens make adjustments to bring a sharp focus on the retina. The inverted image is then picked up by the optic nerve taken to the brain where it is severed and finally an upright image of the object is perceived by the individual. When the visual fields of both eyes overlap, it is known as by vision. It provides a large visual field and forms the basis of stereoscopic vision. Stereoscopic vision is mainly found in predatory animals.